Hi everyone, John T here after a long old break, but hopefully I'm back for at least the next couple of months to put some stuff here on the old Moho John T YouTube channel, the sorts of stuff that we found useful while we've been motorhoming, and hopefully you'll find useful too while you're on your motorhome adventures. But maybe not, who knows? <laughs> Well, it's an absolutely dreadful afternoon here in North Devon, as you can probably see. Uh, but luckily, a perfect afternoon for talking about leisure batteries. The positives and negatives. No? So here we have two very similar looking batteries, both the same size, both about the same weight, both about the same capacity, 70 amp hours. But the one on the left is a car battery and the one on the right is a leisure battery. So why can't I use car battery in my van? Well, the answer to that is the car battery is more like a Hussein Bolt, whereas the leisure battery is more like a Mo Farah. And what I mean by that is the car battery is designed to kick out a lot of energy over a short period of time while you're cranking the old starter motor on the car, whereas the leisure battery is designed to put out much less energy over a much longer period of time while you're relaxing in your van with lights and goodness what else on. So, in a nutshell, that's why you can't use a car battery in your van. Well, in fact, you could use your car battery in your van, but only if you're going to be doing it for very short periods of time. Okay, so now let's have a look at the types of leisure batteries that are available for you to choose for your motorhome. There are four main types that are available. Uh, actually, there's five, but I'm not going to look at the uh, lead crystal battery because that's, because that's quite exotic. And there's plenty of information on the internet if that's what you want to choose for your, uh, for your needs. So the first and most common type of, uh, of leisure battery is the one that we're all familiar with, which is the wet lead acid battery. Now, like all batteries, this is filled with a very corrosive liquid known as the electrolyte, which is usually sulfuric acid, which sloshes around inside the battery. So these batteries, although they're usually sold as sealed, um, they can leak, so they must be stalled upright and you must stall them uh, somewhere where they can't uh, tip over, because the last thing you want is, um, is, is corrosive sulfuric acid spinning around in your motorhome. Um, these batteries can also uh, will also vent gas uh, um, when they're when they're charging, uh, which is hydrogen. Now, hydrogen is not toxic to to human beings, but in concentrations of over four percent, it can be explosive. So you want to make sure there's plenty of ventilation uh, wherever you install install this battery in your motorhome, especially if it's in the in the habitation area. In terms of cost, uh, commonly they're around one pound per amp hour. So um, for a 70 amp hour battery, you'll be looking at about 70 pounds. So the next battery on our list is the enhanced flooded battery. Now these are still wet lead acid batteries, so they've still got the electrolytes sloshing around inside them. So you've still got to store them upright um, in the motorhome and make sure that you're uh, going to avoid spillage at all costs. But the difference between these and the standard wet battery is that they've been designed for the rigours of um, stop-start stop technology in cars. So they tend to be a lot more durable and they tend to be uh, able to recover much more quickly from the sort of, uh, the sort of hard use that you like to give them in a motorhome. Uh, in terms of price, they're uh, about 30-40% to more expensive than the standard wet battery. So um, they're going to cost you around £100 for for a 70 amp hour version. Next on our list is the advanced glass map battery. Now these still obviously have an electrolyte inside which makes them work but this is encased or compressed into a very fine glass fibre mat so they're leak proof uh, and so are a bit more environmentally friendly and can be stored on their side or installed on their side or will squeeze into spaces in your motorhome that you wouldn't be able to get the normal wet, wet battery. They don't give off any gas uh, while being charged, so you don't have to worry so much about ventilation uh, if you are going to install them in your um, leisure area or habitation area in the motorhome. They can also be discharged a bit more than, than standard wet batteries and will tolerate um, discharge charge cycles uh, more, than, than, more than those batteries. 
The main disadvantage of them is that uh, if you overcharge them, you can seriously damage the battery or destroy the battery. So you've got to be really careful with that. And you need to make sure that the uh, charging system in your motorhome is suitable for an AGM battery because not all charging systems are. Now, in terms of price, it's going to be around about 70% more than um, than a standard lead acid battery, wet lead acid battery. So you're going to be looking around 160, 170 pounds for a 70 amp hour AGM battery. The last main type of leisure battery on our list is the uh, gel battery. Now these aren't very common in uh, in UK motorhomes. They're more common in continental motorhomes. But in these types of battery, like an AGM battery, uh, they're totally leak proof because the electrolyte has been converted into a sort of thick pasty gel, uh, gel, gel um, which means that they can be uh, stored on their sides or installed on their sides or in squeeze into tiny spaces or difficult spaces like the AGM battery. Like the AGM batteries, they can easily be damaged by overcharging. And also like AGM batteries, your motorhome's charging system might not be suitable. They also pack slightly less punch for the weight than other batteries. Again, they're more expensive, so you'll be looking to pay around about the £200 mark uh, for a decent gel battery of 70 amp hours. Absolutely re -volt -ing. Sorry about that. Day here in North Devon again today. Now then, um, since I started doing this video, I realised there's quite a lot of things to say about the ledger battery. So what I was going to charge in and do all, everything all at once about batteries, I've decided that I'm going to split it up in several different videos. So this one was about the types of leisure, ba leisure battery you can get. And uh, the next video that we're going to do is how you choose a battery to suit your own particular motorhoming needs. So thanks very much for watching this video, um, hope to see you in the next video. In the meantime, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Uh, I'd be really grateful if you could subscribe because I'm trying to go to a thousand subscribers. I've got a bit of a challenge on. Uh, please share if you see fit. And uh, again, once again, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in a few days time.